Derek Young and Matt Hall back with you for another edition of the KSO Show as we preview the 2019 Kansas State Wildcats football season. That was a very official intro. Yeah. Very official. Um, brought to you by Tallgrass Tap House. Flando and I were there this week talking to Gibson, uh, Thomas Gibson and Martavia Serving. It was a great time. Flando got the special. It looked too fancy for me. It had like a cilantro paste on it. Do you think you'd eat that, D.Y.? I don't. I like cilantro. I, I would there. try it because I try everything, but I just i am a little picky when it comes to cilantro. It had a lot of fancy stuff on it, but I do appreciate them, of course. That's Tallgrass Tap House or other sponsors uh, on points as well. Eating establishments, establishments there, Harry's and Bourbon and Baker. So today, D.Y., it's part three of our seven or eight or nine part series where we preview every kind of position group on the team. We're going to, by your suggestion, which I think is wise, we're going to do fullback, H-back, and tight end kind of all in one. Um, similar roles on the team. Let's start at fullback. I'll just kind of list off, you know, who's on scholarship, and then we'll talk about your thoughts on it. So you've got Luke Sawa, you know, a senior trans, uh, junior college transfer from Butler. Uh, was here last year. Didn't really get on the field. Still a senior, though. Mason Barta, I believe, a sophomore. And then Jackson Dean, the freshman out of Lawrence Free State. I'll start by asking you this. you got three scholarship guys there, a senior, a sophomore, and a true freshman. Am I crazy to think the true freshman's the most likely of those three to, to see snaps this year? It's not crazy, and it's also I uh, th- thought it was wise for us to group these positions together because you you can kind of do that when you see how Kansas State splits it up coaching wise, and that's what they've done. Courtney Messingham will coach all three: the H back, the tight end, and the full back. But in terms of a starter, I think the most likely it's probably a little bit of a leap uh, to judgment for us because we haven't seen him play either, and we haven't seen Luke Soa play. And we've only seen Mason Barr to play when it's the Wildcat Correct. and the quarterback is uh, not on the field or he's split out wide. So I don't think it's crazy, but it's still a little bit of a leap. And one has to wonder, too, if, if maybe even the second most likely is a walk-on that will likely have a scholarship right. when the season starts in Adam Harter, but he also could play a little tight end. So, Right. Adam Harter, I'm glad you bring him up, is probably, you know, to, to me, if I were writing out a, a penciled-in group of starters, he – I would probably write him as a starter at fullback. My question is, though, and this is, again, it's a good good thing we put these into multiple positions, is I would say Harder's most likely, but Chris Kleiman told us in Arlington he's going to play tight end more, too. I think he's going to be a guy who fits at H-back. So it, it, we'll get to the tight end, but that may determine who starts at fullback. How much is Adam Harder needed at fullback or H-back or whatever it is? And if he's not necessarily or more vital at tight at tight end, it could be Jack Sinine running the show from that position. Yeah, I would agree with that. And one – what we're going to be educated and informed on, especially after a season, and we're starting to get that way now, is, is what they're going to require or ask of a fullback in comparison to an H-back, in comparison to a tight end, not only skill-wise, but size-wise. Because I know we've seen Adam Harter you know, over the last two years, and it's funny to me because now I'm just sitting here thinking about it. He's almost a tweener mm-hmm. and between fullback and tight end, which is. is kind of strange. It's a little bit of no man's land, but that might be the H-back rule. Right, because – and I think you nailed it, though. Harder – I don't have it pulled up right in front of me, but I'll, I'll look it up as we're talking. I think he's listed, you know, around 6'2", you know, 245. Like you said, that's that's a tweener. That's a little – you know, it's kind of tall for a fullback. Not that you wouldn't take it, but kind of tall for a fullback. Um, but not enough length, really, uh, you know, and size for a tight end. So that's what, I, that's what I think he is. And I think, you know, H-back's a position we, we talk about – Oh, a little bit and quite a bit, but we haven't seen a ton at K-State. They definitely use it some, but like you said, it's really a hybrid between fullback and tight end, and he's a guy who may fit that as well as me on the roster. Yeah, I think he's the best fit for that. And, and when Matt says two, or he's a little bit tall for fullback. 6'2", yeah. 257. I'm sorry to interrupt so the, you. But yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so that's it's an interesting size. Now it doesn't, it's just like anything else, he's not too tall to play the position or too short. You know, there's there's obviously exceptions. But when when we talk about height when it comes to fullback, it's because when he's 6'2", 257, um, it's someone that's not as rounded or boxy like a yeah. fullback typically is. Yep, you see a lot of, I mean, some of the great ones you think back about them are, you know, that 5'10", 5'11", you know, low center of gravity, all that kind of stuff. Jacks. Because, yeah, because, <laughs> be, yeah, because like an offensive lineman a little bit, there's value in getting under pads when you're going to be in the lead blocker and getting through people. And again, we're not, Derek said it really well. You can't not play fullback because you're six two. That's not the point. It's just if you're looking, if you're drawing one up on paper, you'd probably make one more more like more like Jackson. We'll, we'll talk about Jackson for a second. You've 
you've seen him in person a number of times. He did battle injury, I know, you know, his last year, I believe, at Free State. Um, but you, you've seen him a lot. He's, he's probably not as tall as they list him. You know, he's probably not 5'11 or 5'10. But he's physically built enough, at least in my opinion, right, to perhaps play as a true freshman. Yeah, he's he's a beast. He's he's a t- man, a tough kid, and you won't find um, anyone tougher. And you can ask his teammates at Free State. I mean, he was the heart and soul of that team probably for four years, not just one or two. Um, he was injured in the summer before his senior year, and that was the time where he needed to really uh, push himself and be on the field and kind of camp and perform and kind of put himself out there in terms of exposure when it comes to recruiting. And he could have done that. He would have really pushed himself, but he would have uh, probably risked further injury or not being able to play a senior season. And he didn't want to do that to his team at Free State, regardless if it would help him out recruiting wise. So he didn't, he held himself out and he's still at Kansas State anyway, but yeah, he's jacked. Um, I mean, the recent pictures just show his chest might be, eight inches so (laughs) thick yeah so uh no he's ready physically to play the position right now he's tough enough right now to play the position if he it's just like any other freshman when you have that physical makeup the most challenging thing is going to be catching up to the speed of the game and and just what you're asked to do on a certain play I saw a little video on the Twitter for, I think, the K-State football account or K-State sports account of a lot of the freshmen going bowling the other night. And Jackson Ean was in Keenan Garber, of course, were in that group. And, man, he's just, yeah, super thick. We asked Chris Kleiman at Big 12 Media Days the same question. Is he physical enough, you know, from a build perspective to play as a true freshman? And Kleiman said absolutely, and they're going to need him to. Now, Kleiman went on to say, too, like, hey, he's not approved. He's got to get ready. We've got a lot of guys looking at that position. He wasn't saying Jackson Ean's the guy. But, yeah, from a physical build standpoint, he is he is in plenty of good shape to do that. We'll talk recruiting at the end of this for both the fullback, H back, and tight end positions. I want to talk, you know, tight end a little bit now. Um, because that's the position that when when we talk about the difference in North Dakota State's offense in the past years to K State's, the running backs we talk about a lot, but number two would be tight end and how much they use, how much they use tight end. I'm trying to find it. i I looked up some numbers of how much they threw when I say they, North Dakota State, you know, to the tight end compared to K-State. I'll read it off. Here it is. Yeah, so um, 22% of North Dakota State's receptions last year, 22.7% were two tight ends. At K-State, 4.8% were two tight ends. So when Derek talks about them using tight ends more, uh, they threw to them five times as often, you know, as K-State. Over five. Over five times as often as K-State did. Derek, the number one guy at that spot is is certainly Nick Lenners. He's the most gifted. He was set to have a huge last year last year before tearing his ACL. But he's got to come back from that injury and get fully confident and comfortable uh, before the season begins. Yeah, and it probably has more to do with – how he'll look during a game, how he'll look during actual offensive snaps. Because testing-wise, from what I hear, he's already kind of reached or um, is back to being 100% in terms of you know what he should be testing at or what he was expected to be testing at right now in terms of we're talking about you know a bench press and a 40 and stuff like that. Now, I think there's one leg that might be – just a hair stronger right now, obviously, and that's you know not going to be a surprise at this point. Uh, it's going to take a while probably to ever get back to uh, similar strength in both legs, but he is reaching his numbers, and he's he's where he needs to be from a testing standpoint. So I think it is what Coach Kleiman kind of deferred to, and when I asked him that question while we were in Arlington, and it's going to be – when they're actually taking offensive snaps with all of their pads on versus a defense, does he have the confidence to uh, absorb contact, make a cut here, a cut there, because that's what's going to be asked at the tight end. And I don't know that they think that he's not there yet or that they're just not convinced he's there yet because I don't know if they've seen enough to know one way or the other. Yeah, I, I feel the same. I, I was, you know – Months ago, I would I told anybody who would listen, and I still feel this way, that Nick Leonard's going to be fine, he's going to be fine, he's going to be fine. And I probably assume too much, you know, as mm-hmm. far as just assuming, oh, it's an ACL, he'll be fine because people come back from that. But, yeah, it's still going to take some time. And hopefully, you know, game one, game one arrives, he's feeling good, and he plays well. At that point, he'd probably become a lot more comfortable with the situation and playing with the brace and all those little things. Yeah, I think comfort and confidence is probably where he needs to make the most ground 
because, like I said, from a testing standpoint, he's reaching when he needs to. Now, there is some whispers that maybe he misses the first game or two, but mm-hmm. I have to – I wouldn't go out, I'll go out and say that I expect that just yet, but I think that there's some preparing for that possibility. Absolutely. They do have four players on scholarship at tight end, including Nick Linners, the seniors, Blaze Gammon. He's got a lot of experience. He's played a lot of games the last two years, and he was used a little bit in the passing game at times last year. But let's, you know, just to be totally honest, he's got a good frame. Um, he's probably more in line a little bit with what Bill Snyder maybe wanted at tight end, which is, you know, the, the double tackle joke a little bit, mm-hmm. as opposed to a real pass catching, you know, threat in this offense. Is that something you can project him to fit into under Chris Klein and Courtney Messingham in this group? Uh, they're going to play him because there, there's obviously, I don't think there's a whole lot of other alternatives, but I don't know that when they when they were if they were building a tight end that they that they would build him like the way Blaze Gammon was built or he would move the way that Blaze Gammon moves because I think singularly what his probably biggest drawback is he's just not as athletic enough as what they would want from that position because they're going to have to do multiple things and Blaze Gammon's pretty good at a couple of things but he's not really good at a bunch of things right now now Blaze Gammon is kind of the polar opposite from the next scholarship tight end we'll talk about, which is Sammy Wheeler. That's why Blaze Gammon, you know, huge frame, lots of experience, more blocker probably than pass receiver. Sammy Wheeler, converted quarterback, you know, not a – he's got a good frame, but he's not a big guy yet in that 6'4", 225 kind of range, at least for a tight end he's not huge, but a very good athlete. Um, I think picked up the system faster in the spring than post anybody would have expected and offers something very different, especially in the passing game, than Blaze Gammon would. Yeah, the challenge will be can he be enough of a blocker to not be a liability when he is on the field because tight ends just don't go out for passes. Right. <laughs> so there, Because that'll be a pretty good tell of what Kansas State's going to do offensively if you know he's that you know predictable in terms of what they're going to do on the field. So at the same time, that's where this offense gets a little bit scary because they're going to have to play them. They don't have another option. They don't right. have other choices because they need pass catching threats at the position because Matt showed you the stats. They throw it to them almost 25% of the time. And he's going to be the guy that's counted on for some of that 25%. So he's going to have to learn how to block. He's going to have to become a good blocker. If he isn't, then they're going to have issues. It's a great point that Derek makes on one I don't want to gloss over is it's key that the tight ends can do both. And the reason for this, you can go read a lot of smart stuff out there just on the idea of, you know, double tight end offenses and why they're getting popular again and why they could be one of the hardest things to defend, why the Patriots do it so much, for example. Um, but it's only difficult if, if, like Derek said, they can do both. You know, if, if a guy like Sammy Wheeler or – Blaze Gammon or Nick Lanners or whoever, they've got to be a threat in both because if you don't have to honor them either in the passing game or in the running game as a blocker, then you lose the efficiency and you might as well have another receiver out there. So it is key that they can do they can do both. DY, I think, is also right that there's really not a lot more options at tight end other than what the three we've talked about and Adam Harter, of course, who can help there. But there is another scholarship player at tight end. He's a true freshman, Connor Fox. Derek, you talked about Connor Fox a ton during the recruiting process two Two, well, I guess a year ago. You know, it gets confusing with recruiting, but he was thought to be kind of a flex, split out tight end to fit what K State was, you know, allegedly, you know, going to move to under Bill Snyder and Andre Coleman and that kind of thing. But as you were the first to, I think, learn, he's added size. He's listed at 6'4, 244, and maybe he is another option at that size if he can figure out the blocking aspect of it to play early at K State. Yeah, he's certainly someone that can be a pass catching option. That's what he was recruited at Kansas State to do originally, but he's added close to 20 pounds in the offseason, which is, you know, pretty substantial. And you have to wonder how much of that athleticism did he retain or did he even add more. But, but just because of that physical development, I think there is at least this a plausible scenario probably a likely scenario that he's going to get at least his four games while still maintaining a red shirt um if they don't find options and and the guys that have been in the program for longer than he has then they'll extend beyond those four games and i start to wonder if that's becoming a little bit more likely like we're talking about a scenario where you know who knows how available Nick Lenners could be immediately, or at the same time, how effective Sammy Wheeler could be immediately, or just how multiple Blaze Gammon can actually be. And if we're finding some valid concerns with each of those three tight ends, then you have to wonder how much Connor Fox will play because 
even though we don't know a whole lot about him, we we do know that he's athletic enough to play the position. We do know that he can be multiple in terms of blocking uh, because of his size and, and stuff like that, and also you know being recruited to be a pass catcher originally. So some of the concerns, it's funny to say, some of the concerns you have with the three other guys, they don't exist with him. They may not have to, right. So he's somebody – you know, different players than Jax Deneen, but he's another guy. It's not impossible to think at these two spots and it would it, that you could see young guys play fullback and tight end. And it would make some sense because as we've talked about on this show and on the site forever, this is not a knock on the previous staff, but they, they weren't recruiting fullbacks and tight ends for this offense, you know, so it would make sense. There's going to be opportunities for young guys to come in, you know, to play here. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm not predicting, I think he might get four games at the most. Yeah. Uh, that's what my prediction would be for Fox. And I think there's probably a scenario where Logan Long might end up playing a little bit more. That was a name I was going to reference, too. We didn't get it too much into the walk-ons either. But he's a guy, you know, who's got a frame, of course, to help out. 6'4", you know, 281. So he's <laughs> Double a tackle. With, exactly. So I, I know I make the double tackle joke. But, man, that's a guy who can, who can certainly help out with that and may have a future, if we get way beyond this, you know, at a different position. And, no, yeah. And tied in with that well, next year they're going to be pretty thin at offensive tackle. I would not be surprised if they try to transition him into the, some kind of role of that nature. We've talked a lot about not necessarily having the bodies of the types of players you would love to have for this offense if you're being nitpicky. So recruiting is very important. And I'm not sure, you know, from a star power perspective, it may not be the best position. That's a whole different argument. But there's probably not a, a, a position group there as done with and probably as happy about, I would guess, as the fullback, H-back, tight end combo. Because they've got, you know, Christian Moore out of California. Will Swanson out of Nebraska and Cody Stuff will be out of McPherson, Kansas. So those are three guys that they targeted at those three spots, and they've got all three of them. Uh, Christian Moore, was he the first commit or the second? I want to say he was the second. I yeah, think Matt was... Lack was first, then Christian Moore. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. Christian Moore was the second commit. He was one of their first offers. So it's somebody that they feel like at least is just a perfect fit for their system. And they're probably right because I think there's a lot of similarities between him and actually Adam Harter. And it Very makes similar sense. builds. Yeah, yeah. And it makes sense because I think. Coach Kleiman also told you that Adam Harter is someone that latched on to their system probably quicker than anybody. So I think it makes sense because he's a really good fit for it. Um, at the same time, uh, I think I've written it elsewhere. I think Will Swanson's probably one of their most hidden gems in his class, right. probably the most aside from Taylor Warner. Um, I think that if he had camped in multiple other places, just like he did, he, he camped at Lindenwood, I think, the second day. And the second day, you don't aren't seen as much because there's less schools there. And if there would have been more schools there, he would have been one of those guys that walked away with like 12 offers. The first day, there's over 100 schools. The second day, there's probably less than 20. Kansas State was one of the schools on the second day, so they saw him. They got him to their own camp, offered him immediately, and, and he committed like a week and a half later, canceled camp to Nebraska. So he he discovered where he wanted to go right away once that offer came in and jumped on it, much like I guess you could say – the same thing happened with Mason Richmond and Iowa. They yep. didn't go Kansas State's way. So Swanson went their way. I think that if he had camped with Nebraska or Iowa, just a bunch of other those other schools that could have saw him, I think he would have grabbed an offer from them too. So just fortunate the way they played out, and I think that's why I would consider him quite the hidden gem. And I think he's going to be someone that's ranking does improve uh, yeah. throughout, throughout, his, throughout his senior season. And I think I like him actually more than Cody Stuffelbean, and I know that's probably not um, – uh, can, or I wouldn't say convenient, but popular to say. Yeah, I think most would go the other way. I think most, you're, you're yeah, right. most yeah. the way. But at the same time, Cody Stelfabine's a pretty good athlete himself. Uh, not as long as I thought he would be. I think Swanson might actually be a little longer, um, seeing both of them um, the way we have over the summer. But he's still someone that he kind of has sneaky athleticism and where he, he goes and does something that you maybe didn't think that he could do or that it was just uh, – he does it, and it was really hard to see. I don't know how to explain it, but he's kind of that kind of player. Um, he was really good at the seven-on-seven seven camp at K-State. I yep. think he had a ton of touchdowns that day. So, And I think that's why they started to lean back towards the tight end for him because of the way he performed at that. I think he's a better receiver um, than an, than an along-the-line player, at least at this point in his career, which you know isn't a surprise. But, but the best thing about Stufflebean, and, and this doesn't always you know come out or – isn't always indicative of anything, but he out of the three, you know, he was the best recruiting win because they fended off Wisconsin and Virginia Tech, both schools that offered before they did. Right. Well said. I mean, that's the thing is I, I don't think it's crazy to whether you look at camp or look at video or that kind of stuff at all to say that Will Swanson, I think 
I think it's interesting. I think Will Swanson is a more natural tight end. You know, and there's a lot of stuff that you mm-hmm. said. I, I, I still look at Cody Stuffel being and wonder if he's not a, not a D end more. But I'm not trying to confuse the listener. He was mm-hmm. K-State sees him as a tight end. He could play either spot, but he is committed as a tight end. That's what they see him as. And again, he has a lot of potential, you know, two at the position. But I mean, these are the kind of numbers. I'm not, we're not saying K-State's going to sign two tight ends and a fullback H back every year, but they're going to want bigger numbers at these position. You know, I mean, having three on scholarship, a fullback and not to be rude is to be honest, but only having one that you probably feel great about isn't enough. And then at tight end to have four, when one of them is, you know, Blaze Gammon, who we're not trying to knock, but is a guy recruited more for Snyder system. Another one's a converted quarterback. Another one's a tight end recruited for a different system. There's still some numbers and work to do for the next two or three years, probably, in trying to make these units look how Chris Kleiman, Courtney Messingham, et cetera, would want to. Yeah, they'll sign multiple in 21, I think, at those positions again. Well said. I heard Peter walking away, and I thought, oh, that's it. Fair enough. So we're about 21 minutes in. I think we've talked tight ends, fullbacks, H-backs, probably as much as we can as we continue to preview the 2019 K-State season. What do you got? See how it compares against the rest of the league? Oh, we have to talk about that. I mean, I, all I know about tight ends in the league, we can talk about that in a second. I know the best one is probably Grant Calcaterra at Oklahoma. I say his name wrong every time I say it. But the other note about tight ends in general that you've Making written a about comeback. is – we may not know about a lot of them right now, but if the coaches at Big 12 Media Days were talking honestly Genuinely. and sincerely, <laughs> it will be the year of the tight end, at least of a tight end resurgence, perhaps. We're in making the Big a 12. comeback in the league. I know Matt Wells wants to use it at Texas Tech. I, if I remember right, I think Neil Brown used it a bit yep. at Troy and yep. will do so at West Virginia. Matt Campbell loves a tight end. We know that. They, they don't always go spread, and if they do, they, it's more flexing a tight end out anyways because they like that mismatch that it creates. Les Miles used tight end all the time in oh, LSU. No doubt. Yeah. He, liked it. he likes that heavy formation. Uh, I think Matt Rule hasn't been able to do it. I don't know how he he's came recruited. He's been wanting to, I think. Yeah, yeah, I don't know how he's recruited if he wants to get back to it, but that's what he did at Temple. That He, he ran more of a, like a, would, would, they would call more of a pro style stuff yep. at Temple before he got to Baylor. Uh, Gary Patterson has probably transitioned away from it a little bit, but uh, it's definitely going to be more tight ends in the league. I think Oklahoma has the best one. But I think in Texas Tech, once you use tight end, they don't have any. Right. Uh, right. <laughs> literally. Jason Morrow's not walking through that door, you know. So I, I, I do wonder if Iowa State is probably – Iowa State's probably going to be better in that regard. Like, but it's fair. There's not a whole lot of teams that have utilized the tight end in recent past. So is Kansas State at the bottom league? Probably not. There, But there's probably still a couple of schools ahead or a notches above them. I think so, too. I think if it's a scenario where Lenners gets to be 100% and plays at the level that I think you and I expect he can, and I know K-State did last year, then, yeah, with, with him, I would start to say it becomes – top third you know top, top three of the big 12 yeah. that kind of stuff with without with questions about him and what you've talked about the resurgence throughout the rest of the league now i would say yeah middle kind of middle of the pack you know you're going to look at oklahoma's going to use theirs different you know like they talk about flexing him out there he's kind of as a big receiver so he's gonna have a huge year he's not going to do some of the same things that you're going to ask nick Leonard's to do it's like mark andrews right yeah exactly very similar i think to mark andrews that's who i was thinking of who's mark i think mark andrews plays for the ravens yep. now yeah and they drafted hollywood brown too so the ravens are just going to surround <laughs> lamar jackson with oklahoma weapons which is gonna be fun to watch but we appreciate your time listening to this we appreciate Tallgrass tap house and all of our sponsors we'll come back again next saturday with another position preview it'll be offensive line so this one not you know not even half an hour that one Derek it could take a while to talk some more lines so yeah. for Derek Young for Matt Hall just tell your friends for us please